Hello everyone, this is Ian Ormus with Tech Defense, and today on Tech Tip episode 21, we're going to discuss how to drive more traffic to your honeypots. Alright everyone, so uh, before we dive into the topic of discussion today, which is going to be on uh, how to drive more traffic to your honeypots, I just wanted to hit up a couple of announcements real quick. Um, so one, uh, Automator 1.1 was released. Uh, Automator being the IP and URL analysis tool that uh, we've created here over at techdefense.com. Uh, we had to uh, modify it a little bit in order to get it to work with the new formatted version of uh, IP Void. So IP Void, just to show you what it looks like now. Uh, as you can see, it looks a lot different. If you've used this before, you notice that it looks a lot, uh, it looks a lot different. So I had to change up some of my regex uh, strings in order to find um, in order to be able to pull in the appropriate information into uh, Automator. So if you're having problems getting the GOIP or blacklist information from Automator, it's probably because the version you're on. And uh, you can check out 1.1 to see how that is fixed. Um, yeah. So in addition to that, uh, since we last talked, I've also released a couple episodes of uh, the Kippo Chronicles. And the Kippo Chronicles we go over, um, in Kippo Chronicles, we replay attacks that hit our Kippo SSH honeypots. Um, you know, so the viewers at home can see what these attacks actually look like. Uh, episode one is you know, a pretty average attack. And then episode two, um, <laughs> we named it OMG APT, but that's kind of uh, uh, a slight hyperbole there. It's mostly uh, just a noob not knowing what he's doing on a honeypot. So it was pretty funny watching what he does. So check those out if you're interested in that. So I know you guys are probably getting a little sick of the Kippo stuff at this point as I, I've been doing it uh, more often than anything else. Um, but I gotta tell you, I'm really enjoying what I'm getting out of Kippo right now. So uh, I'll, I'll try to scale back a little bit on that uh, after this video and get to some of the normal things that you guys are used to. Maybe get back into the malware analysis side of the house. So um, today we're going to talk about Kippo. Uh, well, not really Kippo. We're going to talk about driving traffic to our honeypots, and uh, I'm going to show you some unique ways to to get more traffic going to your honeypots. So uh, this, of course, assumes that you have a honeypot that is connected uh, or is accessible from the internet in some fashion. So uh, the instance we're looking at here is just one of my uh, Kippo instances. I have a few of them, so. Uh, between my three or four Kippo uh, instances I have out there in AWS and a couple locally, um, I get about 10 to 15,000 hits a day. I don't know if that's on the low or high side compared to what some of the other folks are, are seeing, but I'd, I'd love to hear that. So about 10 to 15,000 hits a day, and uh, of those, I would say 7 to 10 daily are actual interactive um, humans um, you know, getting on there and doing something. But I found a way to make you know, that number increase substantially, and I'll show you that in a moment. But first, uh, this is uh, Kippo here, and just to show you, uh, this is one of my uh, ones that doesn't get hit that often, but to show you how often I am getting hit, let's show you logs. So. This one, as you can see, has been running from late January till now. And I haven't had it ha on all the time, but I've had a, a decent amount. So the way Kippo does, it rolls the logs over, naming them 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, each time it rolls over. And with uh, Kippo.log always being your most recent attempts. And then if we go to TTY, this is where all of the interactive sessions are stored. So here you can see anything that um, is over 110 is you know somebody actually typing something and getting a response back. So that's what you're seeing here with all these ones that are over 110. Uh, this one I haven't looked at yet, so let's just show you quickly how you would be able to replay a session like I do for the Kippo Chronicles. Uh, it's, it's very simple. You're going to use the uh, utility play log, which is in your Kippo install directory. 
slash utils slash playlog uh, dot py and then you just give it the name of the file you want to replay. So in this case we're going to go uh, 2013-02-09 TAC 23 and that should be enough to pull the rest and once I hit enter it'll replay the session you know as the person did it so if they typed something and backspace we see that backspace and uh, I could tell already this is going to be a winner so this uh, it, the trick I'm going to show you to get more traffic tends the result in uh, more traffic from people that don't really know what they're doing. So I'm going to show you that, but this is pretty typical of what I've been seeing lately when I uh, give people certain um, when I give people certain logon credentials and, and see them log in like this. So yeah, so let's go ahead and close this out. Great. Um, so yeah, I got a, a decent amount of stuff in there, uh, but most of it is is just blank files. So connecting real quick and then and then getting out of there. So pretty cool. Um, but now we want to drive more traffic to our Kippo instance. And how do we do that? Well, one easy way that I found is I can start making public paste uh, or using pastebin and and the like. I can start making a you know, public publicly accessible information out there where I give the credentials out uh, in a manner that looks like I've, I'm the attacker and I found out these credentials. So when I throw those out on those sites and I use particular keywords that people hone in on, uh, we see a whole lot of people logging in with those credentials. So to show you that, uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to be able to tell when somebody's um, using those credentials you gave them or that you've pasted out there publicly. And the best way to do that um, is to use some credentials that people wouldn't normally use on your honeypot. So let's go to data. And in here, you'll see that we have a few files. We have last log, which will just show you all the, uh, all the attempts that have been uh, for connecting to your uh, honeypot, um, past DB, and user db.txt. User db.txt is what we're going to focus on right now. And to show you what user db.txt is, as you can see, it just gives us a username and password combination that we're going to allow into our honeypot. So these are the ones I allow by default. You'll recognize these as some of the pretty common ones. But what we're going to do now is we're going to add one that's not so common. So when we see somebody log in with those credentials, we'll be able to tell who did it, um, or, or where they where they got it from. So let's go ahead and nano user db.txt, and let's just add one for root colon zero colon, and let's name this something like I am so leaked, exclamation point. All right, so that's what we're going to make our password, and let's write out to that and exit out. So now if we look at that, you'll see we now have another um, credential that will be allowed in there. So now that we have this username and password credential, uh, I'm just going to fire up Tor Browser here, which I already have ready to go. And in Tor Browser, um, you can see um, yeah, it's given me some anonymity, uh, and I'm going to paste bin, and basically I'm going to do something along the lines of this. So I'm going to say root at oh, let's do, root at 54.235.161.133. That is the uh, credentials to that honeypot that I just put up there. And then we'll say password equals I am so leaked. So here what we're doing is we're going to you know, make a public paste. We'll give it a really unique name or, or a name that people can hone in on. Because uh, most people have, uh, like myself, have paste been a set up for certain things like 
when password is included or an MD5 hash of one two three four five six. You know those type of things. Um, so let's use some keywords that people might hone in on. So we'll say noob SSH login username and password. So we put that up there. Um, and, and now anybody who's keying in for a paste bin name or title of username or password being the keyword there, they're going to see this. So we just put some keywords in here to help us uh, pull in more users. So we'll go ahead and submit that. And sure, I'll do your CAPTCHA. And great, so now we have our uh, our little paste bin uh, link that we can now start even putting out there more publicly. So some people are already going to see this, right? They're going to be looking at public paste, and they're going to see noob SSH login, username, and password, and want to click that and go to it right away. But um, others um, might not see it right here. So how do we get to other users that may see this? Well, the e easiest way to do that is Twitter. So I'm going to show you what I would do, um, but I'm not going to do it on this account. So I would create a, a Twitter account, a new Twitter account um, that is not associated with you, right? You, you want to keep this somewhat private. And then you'll see over here um, in TweetDeck, I have a list that I follow called Database Dumpers. Um, created, uh, this list was created by HackTalkBlog. So um, you'll see over here I have uh, Pastebin Dorks is one of the most active users for releasing leaked information uh, from Pastebin. So if you click on any of these, most likely you're going to see a whole lot of usernames and passwords. So a lot of people know this and thus follow Pastebin Dorks. So 538 followers, plus he's on 18 list, so even more people see these lists than see these followers. So um, Simply, once you have your new Twitter account, do something along the lines of at paste bin dorks. Oh, that's not an at, that's an a. So at paste bin dorks, check out this one. And then you put the you know, paste bin uh, file in there. Now all the people that are following him are going to see that mention and uh, perhaps even Pastebin Dorks will repost it himself or herself. So that's a quick way to get it out there as well. And you'll get even more users uh, that way. So um, that is a very quick way, method to get a whole lot more traffic generated towards your honeypot. So then once you um, have that going, the way you monitor it, or at least the way I do, is let's go to see that. that and cd log and do something along the lines of this cat kippo log and then we're going to grep specifically for uh, login attempt I believe and there you go so now we'll see all the username and passwords that have been attempted uh, on this particular uh, kippo log now I could just if you wanted to see, uh, let's do log star. So by doing log star, it's going to go through all of my Kippa logs and show you all the um, different attempts from various different users. So now, once we see, once we see somebody log in with our credentials that we have uh, posted, so root and I am so elite, um, we know, you know that that came from that pastebin org, and you can start measuring um, how well you know, those po those public posts you're putting out there are being received. Um, and you could try out some different things and, and measure really quickly uh, how well they're doing. 
So uh, that's pretty cool. That's a good method. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you guys was when uh, when somebody logs into your Kippo Honeypot and they uh, and they do a wget to download something, you'll notice that it downloads that to uh, your download directory where they can't get to it, but you can. So um, a lot of these attack kits have some really cool stuff in them. So if you're really interested in um, what what is out there on these uh, in these attack kits, I've gone ahead and compiled a bunch of them into a single sample that you can uh, download from techdefense.com. And here, let me get the link for you real quick, and we'll go to Tor Browser again. So this is the link. I'll put it in the actual uh, um, description on techdefense.com as well. But go there, and you'll be able to uh, download some of the uh, toolkits that attackers are trying to drop on there. Uh, a lot of botnets, a lot of uh, mass mailers, um, pretty fun stuff in there. So check it out. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Tech Tip. Uh, as always, you can uh, reach out to me at eenormous at techdefense.com um, and of course uh, find more videos like this at techdefense.com so uh, enjoy have a good one and I'll see you next time